In today's video, we're going to be troubleshooting our furnace board. Right now, what we're going to do is we're going to leave our system in the off and auto position. This is going to be my incoming power supply from my circuit breaker that supplies power to my furnace. I do have it in the off position. If you don't have a switch, you may have just a regular three-prong plug that ties into the outlet. Go ahead and unplug it. In the front, you'll have two panels. I remove both of my panels. Once you remove your panels, take some electrical tape and put it right around your switch. Right now, I'm gonna turn the switch on and we're just gonna take a voltage reading at our furnace board. The only terminal right now that should be giving me any type of voltage reading is going to be my R terminal. Everything else, I should not have any power because right now I have my thermostat set to the off and auto position. Right now I have my multimeter set to voltage. And what I'm going to do is we're going to test each lead. This is my lead that I'm going to be using to test each of our lines coming in on the low voltage. And then I have my other one here connected to a ground. So right now we'll go to our R terminal and you can see that I do have the necessary voltage which should read 24 volts at least now we're going to test our blower and you can see here i do not have voltage now if i took my thermostat and on my thermostat if i put it uh, to the on where it says auto and i put it to on then i would have a 24 voltage reading because my blower is calling for it to run from the board but right now because my thermostat is off I don't have anything calling. This is going to be my Y terminal. And this will be for my AC, my condensing unit. And you can see here, I do not have a voltage reading. We'll do the same with our heater. That's the W terminal. And now we're gonna be going onto our common. So I do not have any voltage. I'm going to turn my switch off. This is going to be my power supply to my furnace board, the 120 volts. Now I'm going to set my thermostat to heat and auto. 72 is going to be the ambient temperature. You can see my thermostat click, it's calling for heat. Just make sure that your temperature is set. We have it set to 76. Now we're going to turn our switch on. This will give us the 120 watt power supply to our furnace board. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to take our reading. Again, we have one grounded on my multimeter. And here I should have 24 volts coming to my W terminal. And you can see here that I do have 24 volts. And I'll power supply back off. Before we start the process, I want to verbally kind of share with you the process that happens before we actually start troubleshooting with a multimeter. The first thing you want to do, obviously, before you have any furnace calls, if you're having any problems or any faults or codes, you always want to inspect the filter. Once you inspect the filter, the next thing you want to do is go to your thermostat. You'll want to set your thermostat to auto and heat. And then obviously you'll want to raise the temperature higher than the ambient temperature that's reading on your thermostat. Next, you want to ensure that you have the proper voltage feeding your furnace, which should be 120 volts. Once you verify proper voltage, you'll want to manually engage your door switch once you remove your front panels. Right now, what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to verbally explain to you the startup process for your furnace. Depending if you're having an issue with some type of fault or error code, if you remove power to your furnace and you turn your power back on, your blower motor is automatically going to run for 90 seconds. Once the blower motor completes its process, the next thing that's going to be activated is going to be your inducer blower motor. This will be accomplished by your board sending 120 volts for your inducer motor to run. Once your inducer motor verifies, next 
your pressure switch will call from your board for 24 volts to your switch. What happens is you will only have voltage here at the front. Once your switch verifies, it will send low voltage, 24 volts here to the back switch. Now you can see here that there is a jumper that goes to our switch here. If there's no issues with your switch, that will send voltage here on this orange wire going back to your board and you can see here in the back of the harness. At this point, once your inducer motor verifies and your pressure switch verifies, that will then allow the board to send 120 volts here to your hot surface igniter. Once your hot surface igniter verifies, that will then send the signal for your gas valve to open. This is done by sending 24 volts back to your valve. And once it has the proper voltage, that will then open your valve and allow for your gas to hit the igniter. And this is what will cause the flame. I disconnected my 120 volts to my blower inducer motor. I have my multimeter set to volts AC and you can see I put one lead on each of my leads coming into the insulated portion of my 120 volt supply for my blower inducer. Now I'm going to turn on my switch which sends 120 volts to my furnace. Because I had a code previously, the blower motor is going to run for 90 seconds. Once it runs for 90 seconds, that will then send the 120 volts to my inducer motor. see here that I do have 120 volts coming from my lines so here I'm going to put my leads back in and that will automatically energize my blower inducer you can also verify voltage at your board. Here I have my two wires coming from my inducer motor. You can follow your two wires and I've traced it back here to my board on this harness that ties into the board. I'm going to turn off power. I'm going to remove my harness and now I'm going to check for voltage at the board. Because I remove power this will cause my furnace to automatically restart the startup procedure. Once my blower motor stops, that will then send 120 volts to my inducer motor. The blower motor stop and I do have 120 volts. I'm going to remove power to my furnace and plug my harness back in. Once your inducer motor proves, you will then come down to your pressure switch. Upon startup, your board is going to automatically send 24 volts from this yellow wire to my pressure switch. Once your pressure switch proves, it will then send the 24 volts here to the back of the switch. That will then send 24 volts through this jumper to our switch. The switch will then send voltage here on this orange lead back to our harness, which ties into the board. Keep in mind, even if you lose power to your inducer motor, or if you have a faulty inducer motor, you will still get voltage coming from your board. Once your inducer motor proves, 
then it will send the voltage here to the back of the switch. Right now, I have my multimeter set to volt AC. Here, I have one of my leads from my multimeter set to ground. And now, I'm going to put my other lead from my multimeter here inside of my harness just to get a voltage reading. This is the wire that goes back to my pressure switch. I'm going to turn power on. Again, that will initiate the startup process all over. You can see here, even though my inducer motor hasn't received 120 volts, I'm still getting my low voltage from my board to my switch. Now what I'm going to do is we verify we have low voltage from our board to our pressure switch. I'm going to take my reading here in the back and you can see that I do not have voltage. Once my inducer motor verifies 120 volts, then my pressure switch will send the voltage from the front terminal to the back. My inducer motor has 120 volts. Now that it's verified, you can see I still have my lead from my multimeter on the back. Now I'm getting 24 volts needed. If you look at your manual, this is what is referred to in the manual as a normally open, normally closed switch. Once your switch closes, now we're going to verify that we have voltage at our jumper. And you can see we do have voltage. If your switch is operating properly, it will then send voltage here. And you can see I do have 26 volts back to my board here is my orange wire going back to my board and you can see that I have verified that there is voltage going back once the board verifies voltage going back it will then send 120 volts to our hot surface igniter we're going to remove this and then we'll connect our multimeters to see if we get our 120 volts necessary for our hot surface igniter to turn on. You can see here I have my leads from my multimeter. And you can see I do have 120 volts. If for some reason you're not getting voltage, you can come over here and trace your wires and remove your harness and then test for voltage at the board. If for some reason you're not getting your voltage, you most likely are going to have a problem here, either at your pressure switch or at this fuse. You can see as soon as I unplug it, I automatically lose voltage. Plug it back in. see once I plug it in and it proves and it sends the voltage back to my board my hot surface igniter will then send 120 volts from my board and you can see there that I did receive the necessary voltage if you are getting 120 volts what you'll want to do is you'll want to then test your hot surface igniter use your multimeter by touching each one of these leads and allowing you to see if you have resistance or ohm. This can be done by taking your multimeter and putting one of your leads on each pin coming off of your hot surface igniter on the inside. You'll set your multimeter to ohms. If you have a good surface igniter, you'll get a reading of resistance anywhere between 40 and 90. While performing this test, there is no need for you to actually remove it. You can just basically test it here with your multimeter. You want to be very careful as your hot surface igniter is extremely fragile. Use caution as well as to not touch it with your fingers as a lot of times the oils or just deposits from your hand will cause issues upon startup. Here I have my multimeter set on each lead. 
and I do have a reading of 75. This indicates to me that I do have a good hot surface igniter as 75 is within the range of the needed 40 to 90 reading. Once your hot surface igniter verifies, it'll start to glow. After it reaches a certain temperature, that will then send voltage from your board here on my light blue lead coming into my harness to my gas valve to turn on or open. To test this, we have our multimeter set to volts AC. I have one of my leads for my multimeter ground and I have one of my leads on my terminal right here at M1. I'm going to restart the process. Blower motor turned on. That's gonna run for 90 seconds. Next, I will have voltage coming from my harness to my pressure switch, 24 volts. At this point, my switch is open. The switch will not close until I get the proper voltage to my inducer motor, which is 120 volts. Once your inducer motor verifies, that will then allow the switch to close, which will send low voltage here to my back, which jumpers here to this switch. If there's no issues with the switch, that will then send low voltage back to my board, which then will allow 120 volts to my hot surface igniter. You can see my hot surface igniter is starting to glow. That will then send voltage here, so I have no voltage. You'll hear a click. That will then send voltage to allow my gas valve to open. After about approximately two minutes, your blower motor will then turn on. Here are a few things worth noting before we end this video. If you look here where my flame is, I do have two flame rollout switches. If for some reason the flame rolls back and touches the switch, that will automatically cause the system to turn off. To fix this, there is an automatic reset button here in the middle. You can see the red right there. You can basically go ahead and just reset it. If you're unable to reset it, at that point you'll have to do a continuity test on each of your switches to make sure that you have continuity. If you look here in the back, we have two flame rollout switches as well as a sensor here in the back. Now they all are interconnected if you look at the wire. You can see here on our top flame rollout switch that there is a wire right here and this ties into this back sensor here. If you look at the bottom flame rollout, this one ties here and runs to the top of this flame rollout switch. We then have two wires. One is coming from my bottom flame rollout switch on the opposite side, and one is coming from this sensor here in the back. These two wires are constantly talking with the board. If you trace these two red wires, you'll see here that they tie into the harness. If you look at your harness, upon startup, the board is automatically gonna send 24 volts to my switch. If for some reason my switch trips or fails, it will not send voltage back to the board. Once that happens, the board will automatically shut the system off. So you can see here, I have my multimeter set to volts AC. I have one of my leads here on the ground. And this is gonna be my voltage reading that is sending voltage to my switches. Because my switches are interlocked, And because I have no faults, that is sending voltage back to my board, verifying that we have no issues. 
if my switch was to trip or fail, I'm going to pull this lead right here. My system will automatically shut off and I will lose voltage going back to the board. The only thing that will continue to run obviously is going to be my blower motor. Even though my system failed, I'm still going to have voltage going back to my switches. See here, this is my wire. Again, I have my multimeter set to volt AC. One of my leads is on the ground. And this is the incoming wire that energizes my switches. Until this problem is fixed, the system will not attempt to turn back on. I am now gonna move my lead here to the voltage that's going back to the board see I do not have voltage. I'm now going to plug my terminal back in and that will automatically send voltage going through my switches back to the board. Once the board verifies that this issue has been resolved, the system will then do its startup process. To make sure your switches are good, you'll want to remove your leads tying into your switches. Take one of your terminals from your multimeter and you'll just tap the other. Make sure that your multimeter is set to continuity. So we know right here that we do have a good switch. And you'll want to do this test on each one of the switches and sensors that are interlocked. If your switch is good and your sensor is good during the continuity test, then at this point I would suggest uh, just testing each of these wires that interlock these three sensors and switches. Right now, we have everything connected. All of our wires are plugged in. All of our switches and sensors are tied in. We don't have any issues. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn on our 120 volt supply going to our furnace board. Again, my thermostat is set to auto heat inside the unit is 70 degrees i raise the temperature to 78 degrees this will automatically send voltage to my board and call for heat upon startup your blower motor may or may not turn on for 90 seconds your inducer motor will get 120 volts for it to run if there's no issues that will then send the low voltage from our board 24 volts to our switch which is normally open. Once the inducer motor verifies, it will close the switch, send, and, send 24 volts here through this jumper to our switch. That will then send voltage back to my board. Once that verifies, that will then send 120 volts to my hot surface igniter. Once the hot surface igniter verifies, it'll start to glow. After that glows and reaches a certain set temperature, that will then send a signal from my board here at the blue wire going into my harness. That will send 24 volts for my gas valve to open. This will then allow my heat to turn on and the flame will ignite. Again, during this whole process, I have my low voltage feeding my pressure switch, but I also have my low voltage feeding my rollout switches here and here as well as my sensor in the back if we have no issues that is then sending the voltage back to the board i didn't do our final startup 120 volts that turns on my board my pressure switch is engaged with electrical tape my blower motor is going to run for 90 seconds the blower motor stopped now our inducer motor is getting 120 volts. The board is constantly feeding low voltage 24 volts to my pressure switch. Once the inducer motor verifies, that will then send low voltage through our jumper. 
to our switch. This then runs back to the board here on our orange. Once that verifies, we'll get 120 volts. You see our igniter. Once the igniter verifies temperature, my gas valve will then get 24 volts feeding it. That will open it and that will allow our flame. The last thing that I do want to mention is going to be our flame sensor. If for some reason you go through the whole process, you don't find any issues, but your furnace turns on for a couple of seconds and turns off, that is most likely going to be to a bad or faulty sensor, flame sensor here. The best way to fix that is to obviously remove it. Uh, you can go and do your millivolt test on it, or you simply just take some sandpaper and then just clean the tip of it. And you'll see once I remove my uh, incoming power for my flame sensor, my furnace will turn off. Once you clean your flame sensor or replace it, then your system will start up. If this video was a help, if it was informational, please subscribe.